All right, so moving down below, we now have a new section here that contains some user cards. These user cards are gonna represent authors that are on the website, and we need to showcase their image, display their name, a little bit about them, their location, as well as a link to their respective author pages. So we're probably going to set up some repeaters so uh, we can actually repeat these columns. And we're going to be using something called the user field. And the user field is actually going to pull in the WordPress author data about this person. So pretty exciting stuff. Let's jump right into it. So let's start by adding a new repeater field called authors. And this repeater field is only going to need one field in it. Let's just call that user. And the field type is going to be user. Now that's gonna give us some new settings down here, but we're just gonna leave all the defaults in there for now. Let's hit update and go back to our page. Refresh it. And when we scroll down, we should see a new repeater field. When we click add row, we get just a single dropdown. When you click on the dropdown, you'll see that it just has a list of all of the authors on the, on the site. Let's select the four authors that we want to have display on the homepage. Bob, Buster, George, and Tobias. When we save, let's actually dump all the data out here and so we can kind of get a look at the data that it returns. Hit refresh and we have an array of arrays that has the author data. We have an ID, first name, last name, email, all that good stuff. We're gonna use this data to generate the design that we just saw on the home page. So let's jump into our code. We don't need to see this. And if we scroll down, I have taken the liberty to create our loop um, that if you don't know what this is, see the previous video, we go over repeaters and how they work. Um, so this should look familiar to those who did watch it. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, taking a look at how we want to lay this out. Now, we can get the first name and last name from that data that we just saw. But we don't have like a bio and we don't have a location. I mean, technically we have an image here, but let's take a look at how we can actually add advanced custom fields to an author page. So if we go to our field groups, I've added in another field group called author. And now this author field group appears on a user form that is equal to add slash edit. So all that really means is when you are on the author edit screen, which is just this screen right here, you can scroll down and you can see that we have image, bio, and location. So you can add advanced custom fields to a ton of different types of pages, including author pages. So we have added image, bio, and location to our author pages. So the way that we go about getting that is actually kind of tricky and once you understand what it's doing then it's not so hard but let's do this step by step the first thing that we're going to need is the image and so we don't want this placeholder here we actually want that image that we had set up in our author page so we want echo git field image and the way that you get something off of an author page is by passing in a second parameter with user underscore the author ID. So four, three, two, whatever the author ID is. And so we're gonna need to get that author ID out of the array that we were just looking at. So author ID equals get subfield. Oops, we need an underscore in there, get subfield user that's the name of our repeater field and we want to get the id out of there we want to concatenate that in so we should have our author id here so this should would will return the image array so we, out of that array we want to get the url 
So if we save that and go back to our home page and refresh, we now have the images for each of our authors. So now let's hook up the first name, last name, and their bios, locations, etc. All right, so let's move down to this H4 and let's replace that hard-coded text with echo git sub field. We want to get the user and let's get their display name. Display name and let's refresh back on this page. Now we have each author's respective name and let's fix this bio here. And since this is a field that lives on the uh, author field group, we're gonna have to do the same thing that we did up here with the image. So this is going to be bio and we need to give it user underscore author ID. Let's save that and refresh. So we have all of their bio information there and let's get their location. Same process, let's just copy and paste that here. And let's get location. Refresh, it should go from Salt Lake City to Orange County. And last but not least, let's get their link set up for their author page. Right here we have the link. And we need to do echo git author posts URL. And this is going to take the author ID as well. Let's just end that part right there. And let's refresh. So if you click on this, we should go to a page that has all of Bob Loblaw's posts. Or if we go to George Bluth's page that has all of his posts. One last thing that I wanted to show you is conditional logic. For this example, let's say that we didn't want the user's location to show up if they didn't have a bio filled out. So we could click on location and scroll down here and check the conditional logic box. And it comes up with a set of rules that we can establish. You can get pretty fancy with these, but let's just do a basic example. So show this field if the bio has any value. If we save that and go back to our user profile, we can have we have a bio here, so the location is showing up. However, if we delete that, the location field disappears. Put it back in, and now we can show our location again. But like I said, this is just a small example, and we'll definitely be touching on it more as the series goes on. But I hope you guys learned something today. In the next video, we'll be going over the post object field so we can grab data from blog posts or pages or whatever and display them on the front end of the site without having to write any queries. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. I wanted to take a quick second to introduce you to Kinsta. Kinsta is a hosting platform that specializes in WordPress. Everything is geared towards making your site easy to manage and blazing fast. They offer free SSL certificates, a free CDN, and plans starting at just 30 bucks a month. If you're interested in hosting for yourself or for a client, go ahead and click the link in the description. If you end up signing up, you'll be supporting me so I can continue making these videos. Anyway, have a great day and hope to see you in the next video.